Now we're going to take a look at what's going on in the region, so I'm going to send it over to Trevor Sheets to tell us about what the teams are doing in the area. Thanks, Kyle. After back-to-back -back overtime losses last week, the Pittsburgh Penguins had a much-needed week off for the All-Star break to rest and recuperate. The Penguins lost not only the game against their hated rivals, the Philadelphia Flyers, last Tuesday, but they also lost serves of two of their star players. The Pens lost the game 3-2 in overtime, giving up a goal while serving a penalty for too many men on the ice. However, the story was the hit received by Penn's defenseman Chris Letang in the first period by Flyers forward Zach Ronaldo. Ronaldo was given a five-minute major and a game misconduct for boarding. The penalty that resulted in Letang not returning to the game. It has been reported that Letang has suffered a concussion that will keep him out of action indefinitely, even though it has been, uh, I have been informed that he will be in action against the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, additionally, in that game, Penn star center Evgeny Malkin suffered a lower body injury that got him placed on the IR. No word on when Malkin is expected to return. Wednesday night, the Pens lost to the Chicago Blackhawks in an overtime shootout by a score of 3-2. The Pens scored two goals in the second period to tie the game at two. The goals were scored by third and fourth line winger Steve Downey and Zach Sill. Sill's goal was his first career NHL goal. After a scoreless third period and overtime, the game was decided in a shootout. Blackhawks stars Jonathan Tays and Patrick Kane scored on Penn's goalie Marc-Andre Fleury, while Sidney Crosby and David Perron were blanked by Blackhawks goalie Corey Crawford to give the Blackhawks a victory. After the game, it was reported that Sidney Crosby has been playing with a lower body injury, forcing him to skip the All-Star game, and his status for after the break is uncertain, though he will have to serve a one-game suspension for not missing any games prior to the All-Star break, but then also not participating in the All-Star game due to that injury. This made Marc-Andre Fleury the only Pens representative in Columbus for the All-Star Game. Entering the second half of the season, the Pens are only three points behind the New York Islanders for first in the Metropolitan Division, and four points behind the Tampa Bay Lightning for first in the Eastern Conference. That's all I got have for regional sports. Let's send it back to Kyle. Thanks, Trevor. Now we're going to look at sports in a bigger picture and go to National View with Phil Papour. So take it away, Phil. This past weekend saw two major national sporting events, one a fan favorite while the other appears to be fading off into extinction. The first event was the NHL's All-Star Weekend. On Saturday, the best and brightest NHL players partook in the skills competition. This was a great event for the fans to see their favorite players letting loose and showing off their unbelievable skill. Speaking of letting loose, the Nashville Predators captain Shea Weber nearly blew the top off of Nationwide Arena after unleashing a 108.5 mile per hour slap shot. This slap shot was the second hardest ever at the event, just three tenths of a second behind Zdeno Chara's record of 108.8. .8. Along with the slap shot, Columbus Blue Jacket Ryan Johansson winning over the comb crowd in the breakaway challenge were the highlights of the event. As for Sunday, it was Team Taves versus Team Feligno in the All-Star Game. This was the highest scoring All-Star Game in history, with Team Taves defeating Team Feligno by a score of 17 to 12. The 17 goals by Team Taves was also a record for most scores goals scored excuse me by one team. New York Islander John Tavares also tied the record for most goals in the game by scoring four goals. As for the other major event this weekend, the NFL Pro Bowl was Sunday night. For the second year in a row, the TV ratings dropped substantially. In 2013, the ratings were at 7.7 .7 million, which dropped to 6.7 last year and then to 5.6 this year. This year, the event was held in Arizona in front of a sold-out crowd. And even with a relatively exciting and close finish for a Pro Bowl, the stadium was clearing out by the final five minutes. In the end, however, it was Team Irvin who emerged victorious over Team Carter, 32-28. In other football news, it appears as though the NFL has zeroed in on a deflate gate person of interest. The person is a New England Patriots locker room attendant. The report alleges that the attendant took the game balls from the official's locker room to another area on the way to the field. Investigator Ted Wells still expects his investigation to take several more weeks. However, according to the NFL, the league has interviewed the attendant and has video. According to Tom Brady, he picked out 24 footballs for referees to inspect before the AFC Championship game, and that none of the balls were altered. In NBA news, Kobe Bryant is once again out with injury. Bryant underwent injury on his torn rotator cuff this past Wednesday, January 28th. The surgery will likely end the season for Bryant, who is in his 19th with the Los Angeles Lakers. He injured his shoulder last week in a game against the New Orleans Pelicans. If this injury proves to be season-ending, it will be the third consecutive season the Stars had his season end abruptly. He missed the 2013 playoffs with a torn Achilles tendon, and he played just six games last season before breaking a bone near his left knee. The NBA's third all-time leading scorer is currently 36 years old and has won five NBA titles. Currently, the Lakers have an overall record of 12-33 and, and appear to be well on their way to missing the playoffs. 
That's it for national U news. Excuse me. Back to you, Kyle. Thanks, Phil. When we get back, our case of the week will be debating who's going to win the Super Bowl.